This is the part three of the microcalculator series. Uh, in this, we are going to deploy a registry and deploy a Postgres database in the microcalculators. So uh, I have done this before in Docker. It was pretty easy. Uh, let's find out how easy it is in uh, Kubernetes. So the first step is um, it's the same as we what we did last time. Create a password file um, and 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 the password file will contain the password um, uh, so let's go and do that i would say i'll just go to the home directory i will attach and then create the password and uh, the next is uh, running um, the https docker container so i i would run it locally in my machine um you can so i want to have a password with a username which is admin and then the password would be a standard um this is a very unsecured password but for the demo purposes it works so this is our um hashed password and um yeah so we have to place that uh in this uh file so let's open that up in the um nano and paste it and then save it and exit it that's it um we stored our password in the file let's create a namespace called registry um so namespace is created and then uh from uh, the file which we just stored create a secret uh called auth secret uh and then store the uh, store the content of that um file which just created uh in kubernetes secrets uh, okay it's not micro -cators. it's micro kubectl okay now we have our secret created yeah the the command here is wrong i will try to um okay now this is something important so i would recommend you just open a notepad and then paste it and look at this thing very carefully so there are too many things happening here so first thing is kubectl create secret docker registry registry correct this is the name and we are creating it in the default namespace and the um, docker server is going to be registry.kdev.antosubash.com this is my um, domain it can be different for you and in the username i give admin and in the password i give the at wrd one so if you want to confirm the password i give the at ssw0rd1 so this thing which we created the thing with we have to pass it here and the email i'm gonna give my email bash at live.com so what are we doing here we are creating a docker registry so that once the registry is created we can use this uh to request the container from the registry we created i hope i'm making sense uh, yes so you you see we have two secrets one is auth secret which is the secret um from the file registry.password but there is this registry cred that is the secret for the registry which we are going to create the, we didn't even have the registry yet but we are just setting up all the secrets first so that it's easier going forward now let's create the folder because we have to put the files somewhere uh when the when when we upload the docker images right um so let's make a directory in the mount and let's create the deployment so we have the folder and yeah this is normal um kubernetes stuff we are saying the namespace then we are saying hey i have a deployment and the deployment has a volume which is also uh, um there's also a cert volume and then there's auth volume and these are my environment variables and these are the volumes so for the repo volume we are using the host path which is slash mount slash registry for the sort volume we are using the secret which is registry tls secret for the auth volume we are using auth secret remember the auth secret this secret so and then the normal thing which we do in kubernetes we create a service for the pod and then once the pod is when the service is ready when then we have to create the ingress route we are setting the proxy body size as 1 gb 
uh, because um, I don't think we would have containers bigger than one GB. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm just putting this here. Um, you you do you whatever you want. Um, again, normal Kubernetes stuff. Setting the host TLS, setting the rules for the host, saying the service name. Yeah, make sure you just uh, change the URL here. Uh, this is my URLs. Uh, it might be different for you. So yeah, just use those URLs. Um, I think I have it in my Git repository infra folder. Um, there is, no, there is a registry folder. Okay, uh, let me check everything is correct. Um, yes, we have the registry folder. We have the um, auth password um, file. Um, now let's apply the um, registry and then see what happens. Let's get the uh, pods and then see what's going on. It says container creating. Yes, now the container is running. Let's check the service. Service is running. And finally, the ingress. That's the important one. And it seems like the ingress is also running. Mm, how do you check? Let's log in. If yes, our login succeeded. So if this succeeded, uh, you, you can be sure uh, that um, the registry is working fine. You don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, so what we have done is that we created a folder called um, mount registry, and then uh, we just set up a pod uh, to push all the incoming Docker containers uh, into that folder. But this is not always a feasible solution because the doc, the Kubernetes is kind of designed in a way that you don't manage the hardware. Uh, the Kubernetes manages the hardware. Um, so uh, when you want some storage, you let the Kubernetes know like, hey, I want the storage and it provides a storage. How does it do? It uses persistent volumes and then sets the storage up for you. You don't care which machine it is. It just figures it out by itself. So how would I do that? For that, you have to make sure the host path storage is enabled. Go out to micro KTS status and then uh, enable the micro KTS uh, host path storage is not enabled. And then we can uh, set up uh, the persistent volume claim. So uh, in this persistent volume claim, what I am saying is like, um, I want a persistent volume claim, which is called Postgres PVC. It has a write, read and write access, and the size of that claim is 5 GB. Uh, so what uh, Kubernetes will do is it will allocate 5 GB in the disk space of the machine uh, and then allocate it for this pod, which is uh, Postgres pod. Uh, in the Postgres pod, uh, we are mentioning a Postgres 12 image with Postgres. Uh, and then we, I'm, I'm enabling a bunch of uh, extensions and uh, setting the resources. And then in the mount volume, we are setting up the um, mount path. And uh, in the volumes, we are using the persistent volume claim C. This is the claim name, Postgres PVC. And Postgres PVC is the persistent volume claim we created here. And um, the normal thing happens like, um, so if you want to be exposed, so you need uh, the service as well. So the, that's it. We have uh, our PVC and then uh, deployment. Let's uh, try to deploy this. Um, I think this is inside the infra folder. Yes, um, I will first add it. Um, yeah, you can see it's the same file. There is nothing happening. We don't have to create any folders. You just apply this file. The PVC claim will be created for you. And then the deployment uh, should just happen. Okay, our uh, Postgres deployment was done. Let's check the pods. Okay, our pod is running. The next is, uh, let's check the services. Yes, our Postgres service is running. And let's check the provisional volume claims. And our PVC is running. 
with the capacity of 5 G 5 GB. Um, yeah, so how would you access the Postgres container now? We actually didn't set up any ingress route. That means we cannot access the Postgres container from any location. Um, but uh, inside the cluster, we will be able to access. Um, so to access it, we will first deploy a tool called Adminer. Adminer is this small PHP application which can uh, connect to any Postgres database. So um, it doesn't have any storage. It's just like a simple web app, uh, which I use a lot to locally uh, connect to my um, databases. I'm going to do the same, uh, and, but deploy it in the Microcreators cluster, and then um, we will use the uh, Adminer app because the app is running inside the cluster. It can access the database. It's just that the apps which are, are running outside or which which are are not able to connect. So um, let's assume that uh, this is a normal web application, and then the application has to connect to the database. We will see how that happens. So um, this is the container image adminer and then the port and we are using the let's encrypt and then this is the uh, domain which we are going to use so i i think i have the adminer as well here yes it's called pg web so you have the file here and then apply and then uh, wait for the service to create um yeah so ACME resolvers are already there um and then ports pg web pod is already running um and i will search for the ingress pg web ingress is also running let's see if i can uh go to this application yes i can actually go to this application and in the postgres uh in the login you just select postgres as the system because it's uh it, it can connect to multiple databases uh, so what you have to do is use the server as this so this is the local uh dns for the postgres uh, we use um we deployed so the postgres is the container name default is the namespace and svc the local uh, cluster local is the name of the is the local um your dns resolver so you, you use this as the server and for for the username and password we can go to the um, container environment variable which is postgres for the username and then password is my postgres password uh and you can log in yes we are inside our postgres which is here and this is the test uh table test database we created and it's there we can access so that means uh our uh application is running our database is running and our registry is running all the three stuff i usually need is there so uh, my usual workflow is uh, i'm a dotnet developer uh, yeah i usually create a .NET apps and then uh, deploy them so that's what i'm gonna do next um so i will create a .NET application um and then uh, try to use postgres and then uh, deploy it that will be on the part four um i hope uh, you will come back and watch it and um for now goodbye